hey what's up welcome to my youtube channel now if you are a fan of the sunday jumpstart podcast you probably like jessica what the hell are you doing what are you doing on my screen and not in my ears well i wanted to sit down with you and talk a little bit about that um before we dig on into that if you're new here my name is jessica lauren and i am the host of the sunday jumpstart podcast it's a weekly podcast helping goal getters ditch the excuses do the work and make ish happen. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. Your girl has been raggedy and I'm so damn sorry. I have not posted a new episode to the SJS podcast since March of this year, 2023. Um, and I try not to be raggedy like that. I have been doing a podcast since December 2017. And up until like 2020, 2021, your girl was consistent. A weekly episode every week, a quick tip episode episode every Wednesday but if you've been around for a while I just had my first baby boy last summer summer of 2022 and when I had my baby baby not much had changed I had a major c-section um but I still was rocking sorry I'm just making sure we going I was still rocking and rolling um right after <laughs> they pulled the baby out of me I went on walks I only stayed in the hospital for a day we went out to eat lived our best lives and all was well and all still is well um, things had shifted. I wasn't going back to work. I'm a stay at home mom now. Whoop, whoop. Um, all, all was well. I had him in the summer. Things were perfect. But then winter of 2023 came along. This is like December, January. I live in the Chicagoland area. And I don't know if y'all know this, but when you live in the Midwest or up north or somewhere, baby, <laughs> it'll get gray at like 2 p.m. And when it's dark when you wake up. And so I was I was going the room. Um, I had seasonal affective disorder. That's when a lot of us northerners just go through a depression simply because there isn't enough sunlight. Not only that, I had just had my baby. Um, and so I was diagnosed with postpartum depression. The crazy thing about the postpartum depression is that I was under the impression that I would get it within the first month of him being bored. So when I get through month one, two, three, four, five, six, honey, I'm like, I don't got no PPD. I'm doing good. I'm moving and shaking. I'm feeling really good. But then we got smack dab in the mental middle of winter and I just was not doing well mentally emotionally um you know i'm not with my family my family is back home in detroit um i've always lived in illinois since i was 17 i'm 38 now but when you have a child when they say it takes a village it really does just having that support and seeing your family i talk to them every single day but you know you just like damn i really wish my mama was here my sister was here my fiance's family he they're in town but there are a lot of guys they're older it just isn't the same as your family so i think I was just really really struggling now I was still pumping out content um but it just didn't feel aligned anymore <laughs> if I'm being real it did not feel sustainable anymore it didn't feel good anymore if I'm being truthfully honest like I said I have been doing it since December 2017 and I had worked at such a level that I just could not compete with as the Jessica who just had a child, Jessica that's a stay-at-home mom, Jessica that don't live in the city anymore, we're in the suburbs. You know, I used to be a coffee cafe girl. I need to take my little laptop and my coffee and just live that, you know, girl boss entrepreneur lifestyle. Once I had my baby boy, <laughs> um, things were different and I was older. When I started my creative entrepreneurial journey, I was in my early 30s. Your girl is knock, knock, knocking on 40 and I'm happy about that, but things had shifted. And so I would, you know, Will, thank God, he works home as well remotely. When he get off, he'd be like, all right, I'll take the baby, you do your thing. He'd be like, I don't want to. It had become a chore um, because it's a lot of work that goes into podcasts. I don't care what nobody else promises you. If you want to do a show of excellence, not perfection, those are two different things. Excellence is having high standards and making sure you always hit the mark consistently. Perfectionist is like nitpicking. It's kind of negative. I can't do nothing right. You scrapping stuff and all that. Two different things. I had a show of excellence, if I'm keeping it real, okay? Um, I didn't play about it. My processes, the way I edited things, the way I 
did my photo shoots, all of it, the website, the show notes, I transcribed my episodes. It would take me anywhere from eight to 12 hours to do one hour episodes and throw in there the quick tips and all that. It was just a lot. And I was still trying to like crawl through the postpartum depression, through the exhaustion, through the isolation of not being around my family, through just living a different lifestyle. Um, I, before, you know, the pandemic, I was traveling seven to 12 months out the year with a production company, hotel hopping, all of that. So even the transition to being a stay at home mom was a lot. And the podcast became a heavy burden and it was a distraction. I'd be laid up with my baby, kissing on him and all, just loving on him. And in the back of my mind, it'd be like, but what about the podcast? What about the podcast? And I'm just watching him on my iPad and watching all that stuff. What about the podcast? What about the podcast? Did you do it? I couldn't rest, you know what I mean? Or like, I'd be like, hurry up and take a nap so I could get back. And I'm like, hold on, that's not what this is about. I'm a mom now. I have a different set of priorities. Do I still want to be creative and show up and have an online business and create change and inspire and impact other people oh, of course because I know that's my calling God didn't give me the gift of gab for no reason um but something had to change and so after that business series that I did and I'll be sure to link the show in the show notes uh in the description rather um I was like okay come on let's I get on the mic and record an episode and I was too tired to finish or Kobe would get up and need me. I was nursing my son for a long time. Um, and so I was just like, this is too heavy. And then to keep it a thousand, I was so busy pumping and churning out content for the past damn near decade i didn't get a chance to really work in my business um and as much as i love to speak and i love the platform and i love the community and i love podcasting it wasn't financially sustainable it was also a financial burden it's a lot of money and investment that goes into podcasting one i'm grateful to invest in but uh, it is a stay-at-home mom down you know will is holding us down but you run a business to make money and when you're so focused on churning out content all the time and there's this promise if you open an online business you'll be a millionaire and you're watching other people get booked because of it i was beginning to get resentful because i was so focused on the content i didn't have time to pitch i didn't have time to learn more i didn't have time to experiment and be creative so I just kind of stopped. I didn't mean to stop from March to June, but in that time, I got a therapist. <laughs> in that time, I started meditating, praying, laying down on the altar, speaking in tongues, whatever I needed to do to get back centered and anchored in who Jessica Lauren was, this new version. And a lot of people say they lose themselves in motherhood. And it wasn't quite that. It was just like, oh my God, imagine a new version of you just pop up and you're like, who the heck? Okay, girl, you cute, you doing it, but who are you? That's where I was and that's where I am. And I guess that's the new journey of motherhood. So fast forward, to June, 2023, here we are. Um, you, you seeing me? I've always wanted to do YouTube. We all know that video is starting to become king now. And I don't want to make the mistake of being so stuck in my ways and so, you know, holding on to the thing that got me success and the thing I know how to do so hard that I missed the boat, right? Um, we've seen industries collapse, newspapers, magazines, just because they weren't keeping up. So I, and I've always wanted to be a YouTube girly. Like when I had no real jewelry, my blog, which is still up and running, I was vlogging, I was doing my thing. Uh, but now that cameras are so good, it's no excuse. Your phone. So um, I was just like, give YouTube a try. And be before I decided all of that, I was healing, feeling better, feeling more centered, drinking my water, eat my vegetables. And me and Kobe got into a better groove, right? The first few months of motherhood and, and you know, just our relationship is just figuring each other out, figuring out routines and all of that. And it changes constantly. But right now he's a little bit older. I'm a lot more confident as a mom. I feel healthier mentally. And it's summer to have, baby. Okay, we go out saying, want to kick it. Me and Kobe kicks it. Um, our little family is doing well, but I, I did need help. 
So it's always been in the back of my mind to show up and do YouTube because after a while you start to hide. I'm, I'm turning it this way. You start to hide behind your mic as a podcaster. It's really easy to do. And I've been called to get on video for a while now, even pre-pregnancy. It was like, oh, I want to do video. It's just something keeps telling me to do video. Um, and so here we are. The reason why I'm switching lanes it wasn't sustainable. I couldn't work like that. In order for me to do a podcast, I have to have my special mic, my laptop, my gear, headphones. I got to be hooked in a pop filter. Um, I needed like a solid four hours of quiet in my office in order to do the podcast with a baby. You know, like it just wasn't feasible. Like I could not operate like that anymore. So that was the first thing. It just production wise wasn't super sustainable in this Jessica 2.0 version of myself. The second thing is financially. Um, YouTube gives me the opportunity to pre cre create the same type of content, um, actually be a little bit more creative with the opportunity through AdSense and brand deals and all that stuff to bring in a source of revenue. Um, as opposed to the podcast, I have to manually pitch and I'm still doing that. Don't get it twisted, honey, and still coming up with products and things of that nature. But at least as I'm growing listenership, I will get rewarded for that. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it made a little bit more sense. The third reason is that I can do it with Kobe. <laughs> um, if he wakes up and nap, I can sit him right here on my lap and keep going or let him play and keep doing it. Um, with the podcast, there was a lot of, oh, snap, he's up, let me go. And then I would have to come back, sit down, listen to the entire episode again and try to edit. It was just like a, a lot. Um, to do. So with this, I could be filming us throughout the day. And then while he's sleeping, he does this thing where he'll sleep for like a good 30 minutes by himself. That's why I'm watching him on the iPad now. After them 30 minutes, he wants one of us to hold him. Um, and then he'll sleep the rest of the hour and a half. Like I said, I can't lug that around, but I can hold him and be on my phone and editing. So this was my way of trying to still show up and not give it up. Like I have a bunch of friends that that have completely shuttered their podcast, their websites. They're like, I'm done. And trust me, I was going to do that. Like, just like, it's over. The jig is up. Um, but I believe for me, there was still just a part of me that really liked to do it and missed it and, and still very much wanted to show up. But it had to be in a different way. It could not be in the way that I have been doing it. Um, and this allows me to have some fun again, right? Um, it, this is is fun, don't get me wrong, but it becomes a little bit one-sided. I mean, if people leave a rate and review, that's awesome and I'm grateful for it, but it's not a two-way conversation. With YouTube, I could hop on a live and we could talk and do the show together. I could read your comments. I could go to your pages and you know show you some love. So for me, this is more of a reciprocal exchange. I get to be creative and flex some editing skills and just learn something new, especially since we're getting into video. But the most important thing is that Kobe, like I could be talking and cooking and doing, taking us on a stroller. I don't have to be bound to my office. So that was the major thing is that we get to move and shake about a lot. Okay. So y'all, look who just woke up and decided to join us. Say hi, Dubby Dubby. Say hi. Yeah, can you wave? But this way with video, I don't have to try to hide and be quiet and all that jazz with my little one. He could kind of be a part of it. And uh, was that a part uh, of the plan? Uh, uh, say no. Say I want to talk. I got something to say. But I figured this was a better way for me to be able to show up, still make impact, still have fun, still be creative um, without me ending the show completely. Okay, so it's time for me to get him lunch. I will talk to y'all later. Say bye-bye. Say bye. You over it? That's okay. Bye. <laughs>
what does that mean exactly for the podcast? Well, that just means we're just going to be hanging out right here on YouTube from now on. Now, the audio version of the podcast will still be in Apple Pod Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, TuneOut, Stitcher, the whole nine. Um, I'm not going to delete that library. All 200 some odd episodes will still live long forever over in the audio format. But over here on um, this channel, we're still focusing on productivity, goal getting, mindset, except this time, I'm not trying to be nobody's guru, you know what I'm saying? Um, life be lifing on me. And I think with the podcast, I would tell you afterwards, like, oh, this is what I did to get through it. Here on the channel, you're going to be able to walk through me, the good, the bad, the ugly, the things that I'm trying to figure out and overcome and unlearn and just try to be resourceful with and bootstrap all of that. You're going to see it here. So there'll be vlogs, there'll be podcasting type episodes like this one. Um, the hope is to maintain the schedule that we had over on the podcast every Sunday. Um, it'll be either me going live or this type of format. Um, the quick tips are going to turn into shorts because you got to stay with the time, play YouTube's games okay um um and then if for some reason i want to show up auto audially auditorially i'll just upload to the podcast but for the most part you can just think of that as like a library of foot old stuff you know um and just join me over here for vlogs where you'll see behind the scenes of me building my stationary company behind the scenes of showing up behind the scenes of what it's like to be a 38 first 38 year old first time mom what it's like to be a stay-at-home mom a working mom an entrepreneur a creative a daughter sister mother cousin all that stuff so that'll be right here on that youtube channel so yeah let me know how you're feeling about everything go ahead and subscribe like comment do the whole song and dance and i'll be sure to comment back and check out your pages and all that stuff but i'm really excited about this new opportunity to be able to just do something different different have fun try not to hide no more and just explore this new facet of my life and business so that is actually it y'all it's so good to see you and i'll see you again for the next video on sunday lord willing lord willing all right y'all bye all right how low can you go up can you go down low all the way to the high low can you go can you bring it to the top one stop one We did it, girl. We did it.